everyone I thought I'd do a quick live stream because I got a little bit of information about the disorder that Sebastian Rogers was diagnosed with when he was a baby although he was only diagnosed with autism last year he was diagnosed with 6q27 chromosomal deletion syndrome or disorder when he was a baby and I thought it was interesting it doesn't help us find Sebastian it doesn't help us in any way with the case I'd never heard of this syndrome so I decided to do a little bit of googling about it and I found this document and thought it was interesting to share I'm not going to read it all word for word I have put this in the description box though. So if you do want to read it from cover to cover, you can do. But I think what it does do is it gives us a little bit of context as to Sebastian's behaviours, the types of things that his parents might have been dealing with. It gives us a little bit of understanding about him as a person. So... I thought that's useful, useful to share, very useful to share. So hello everyone. And I'm over on Michelle Walks because I've run out of StreamYard time on Michelle After Dark because <laughs> I've done a lot of live streams. So I've got to wait for, because I'm, I'm a, I'm a skinflint. I, I'm, I'm tight. I won't pay the whatever it is a month. The stream yard because I tell myself that I don't stream enough. So I just have two accounts. So you get 20 hours free on StreamYard. So I'm just about all out of hours. I, I probably could do one more live actually on Michelle After Dark and get away with it <laughs> without having to pay. But I've got like virtually the whole full hours on this one. And it resets at the beginning of the month anyway. So anyway, all right. So this is the document. And it's from an organization called Understanding Chromosome and Gene Disorders. Or unique. And this is about 6Q deletions from 6Q26 and 6Q27. So are you ready for a little bit of a lecture on chromosomes and genes? <laughs> Normally, when I talk about genetics, it's when we're talking about, you know, DNA tests in crime scenes. So I think this is the first ever time, maybe the last, I'm not sure, that I'll talk about genetics from a chromosomal disorder point of view. And for anybody who is interested <laughs> anybody at all who's interested i did when i was a kid i did ponder becoming a geneticist because i was interested in genetics but i decided against it because i thought it might involve me doing tests on animals and that was against my ethics way back when and it still is and i'm glad i didn't become a geneticist honestly i don't think i could have handled sitting in a lab with a white coat dealing with test tubes i'd probably i'm just so clumsy 
Thank you, Purple AJ, for the $20. That's very kind. <laughs> Since you can't do memberships. <laughs> yeah, it's for anybody who's wondering where their green jacket's gone, there are no memberships on this channel. So if you're wondering why you're green on Michelle After Dark but not green on here, it's because this is a different channel and there's no memberships on it. All right, so like I said, I'm not going to read it cover to cover. It's 16 pages. Some of it I don't think is, I mean, it's, it's all interesting. So like I said, I've put the link to this in the description box. But I just want to do a quick live on this and focus on the behavioral aspects. There's, there's some potential kind of physical aspects to do with the body. I'll briefly, very briefly touch on that, but I mainly want to focus on the um, the behavioural aspects. So, oh, Don, I need to do genetics and become a geneticist. Now I wish I had. Well, I'm kind of glad I didn't. Maybe if I had have become a geneticist, I wouldn't have thought anything different, would I? But hey, all right. But I will read this first section because it, it just explains what the syndrome is. Uh, for those who know absolutely zero about genetics, you need this context. So chromosome 6Q deletion means that part of one of the body's chromosomes, chromosome 6, so that's where the 6 comes from, has been lost or deleted. So it's normally due to an error. Um, very, very early on in embryonic life. Um, it can be passed on, like you could have a, a parent with it, and, you, and that gets passed on to the child, or it can be something that occurs as a one-off. You know, it's the first time, like both parents don't have it, no one in the family has it. It's a mutation that occurs as a, you know, and, and just an error, just one of those flukes of nature. If the missing part contains important instructions for the body, some learning difficulties or disability, developmental delay and health problems may occur. How serious these problems are depends on how much of the chromosome has been deleted and where that deletion is. So some chromosomal deletion syndromes are so catastrophic that a baby is never born, like the the fetus or, or, or even an embryonic stage, basically aborts itself. Like one in five pregnancies ends in miscarriage, usually very early on in the pregnancy. I had a miscarriage when I was very young. Um, and you, you never know why. It's just something that, you know, if that fetus or that embryo isn't viable, then nature takes care of it. Sorry to be brutal, but it does. It takes care of it. But there are some chromosomal deletion syndromes that are not catastrophic um, to that the survival of that child, and um, a baby is born. Okay, so genes and chromosomes. Our bodies are made up of billions of cells. Most cells contain a complete set of genes, thousands of genes which act like a set of instructions controlling our growth, development and how our bodies work. So that's basically genetics in a nutshell. <coughs> genes are carried on microscopically small thread-like structures called chromosomes. So chromosomes are made up of genes and genes are made up of DNA. So, so DNA testing comes in. We usually have 46 chromosomes, 23 inherited from our mother and 23 from our father. So we have two sets of 23 chromosomes in pairs, unless you have a chromosomal disorder where you get a whole extra full chromosome. That does happen, like um, trisomy 21 is Down syndrome. And just as a, a fluke of nature, <laughs> you end up with three chromosome 21s, trisomy 21, instead of two, and that creates Down syndrome. There's other chromosomal trisomies as well. 
um, there's trisomy 18 that creates um, it's a completely different syndrome than Down syndrome. Anyway, I digress. We're talking about chromosomal deletion rather than in or rather than in a whole extra chromosome. We're talking about bits of chromosomes that are deleted. Okay. So apart from two sex chromosomes, two X's for a girl and an X and a Y for a boy, chromosomes are numbered one to twenty-two. So you've got chromosomes 1 to 22, and then chromosomes 23 is two X's if you're a girl and X and Y if you're a boy. And even there, you've got chromosomal um, issues. You can have, you can be an XXY. You can inherit two X, y, two X chromosomes and a Y. I think that's called Kleinfelter's syndrome. It's a long time since I studied chromosomal disorders. Anyway, <clears throat> okay. Each chromosome has a short Q arm. So the short arm is called Q and the long arm is called, uh, sorry, the short arm is called P and the long arm at the bottom is called Q. So if we zoom out of here, so this is P. So if you have a P disorder, it's going to be something from this. It's not, not even half. It's less than half. So the short arm of the chromosome, if part of that goes, it'll be a P disorder. But if it's part of this longer arm, it will be a Q disorder. So 6Q27 means it's chromosome 6 on the Q arm. And it's section 27, and it's right at the bottom here. This tiny, tiny bit here at the bottom. Either all of it or just some of it. It can be just a tiny bit missing. So when we say uh, 6Q27 chromosomal deletion syndrome, it doesn't even mean that the entirety of this little section of chromosome is missing. It might just be a small section of it. So that I, I assume the more of it's missing, the more severe you are affected. And of course, we don't know how much of that little section of chromosome that Sebastian is missing. We don't know that answer. OK, so uh, where are we at? Each chromosome has a sharp P arm and a long Q arm. In a 6Q deletion, material has been lost from the long arm of one chromosome 6. The chromosome may be broken in two places and the part between them is missing. That's called an interstitial deletion. Or it may be broken in one place and the part of the chromosome from the break point to the end of the arm is missing, which is a terminal deletion. The ends of the chromosomes are called telomeres and the deletion from close to the end is sometimes called a subtelomeric, I can't say it, subtelomeric deletion. And that will be what 6Q26, 6Q26 and 6Q27 are, because they're right at the end. Right at the end. <laughs> okay. So I can't see them with the naked eye, right? But you have to like look at them under a microscope. And bands six Q twenty six and six Q twenty seven are the last bands before mm -hmm. the tip of the long arm of chromosome six. This guide tells you about the effects of losing DNA from these bands. The missing piece of chromosomes can be tiny or much larger. So if you've got, you might have. 6q26 and 6q27 missing and i would imagine the more of it you've got missing so if you've got two sections missing you're going to be more severely affected i would assume because you lose more genes the more of the chromosome that's missing the more genes you you lose but most genes actually are not even useful <laughs> they don't even appear to do anything um but if, let's say, for example, you were only missing the very, very tip of section 27, then you might not be at all severely affected. 
You might, you might. I, I would imagine that there's people who go through en their entire life without even knowing that they've got one of these kinds of disorders. Um, oh, Johnny to take a trip. My son's cousin has a Q chromosome deletion and is disabled as is possible to be, can't walk or talk, blind, incontinent, fed through a tube, not inherited in her case. So that's really sad. But it might be a completely different disorder than what Sebastian has because it might be a different chromosome and it might be that that, that person, son's cousin, has got a whole massive chunk of chromosome missing rather than just a little piece. Right. Okay, so this just goes into how these things are tested and how they're measured. All right, people with a deletion from 6Q26 or 6Q27 have different sizes of deletion. The size can be small, uh, micro deletions, often measured in pairs of bases called base pairs. These are pairs of chemicals that are linked by the rungs in the ladder-like structure of DNA. Since each chromosome has millions of base pairs, the numbers in the base pair coordinates are very long. Often they are shortened like this. 1,000 base pairs can be shortened to 1 kilobyte, kilobyte 1 million base, oh my God. All right, we don't need to go into that. All right, so this just goes into how the genes are tested to find out that you've got that disorder or indeed find out how you've got any of these chromosomal disorders. So we don't need to read that. That's pretty complicated. Okay, so um, <clears throat> like I said, I'm only going to briefly touch on the fit possible physical abnormalities i want to really focus on the behavioral because we know that sebastian isn't massively severely affected you know he can walk he can talk he can he's very intelligent he goes to mainstream school yes he's in the special needs program but you know he's not severely affected as in really physically disabled um so birth near normal birth weight, tend to have more frequent feeding issues. I mean, I don't know what led to Sebastian being tested as a baby. There must have been something that either, something that triggered that either medically or some, some concern. There must have been obviously some concern because these kind of chrom chromosomal disorders, they're not tested for routinely you, you know i would assume that you'd have to be purposefully tested so there must have been some issue that um they felt the need to do this kind of testing so there are a few kind of things um low muscle tone is common but mainly most most kids kind of first signs a healthy, no sign of anything unexpected at birth. Sometimes babies have low muscle tone anyway when they're first born, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them really in the long term. Um, but in these these particular chromosomal disorders, there might be some concerns as that newborn, you know, starts to starts to grow in most delayed development was the first sign of this chromosomal disorder in one child so this would have been that was studied as part of this uh, part of this organization one child the first signs emerged at only age four in some families with 6q27 deletion relatives with the deletion both adults and children were only diagnosed during family testing. So a parent might have it, never been tested because it's not a routine thing, and be so, you know, uh, they might have had some delayed development as a kid and have just grown to be perfectly <laughs> normal, functional member of society, and there was never any need to test because there was never any signs of a problem. So... 
like I said, there's lots of these genetic or chromosomal disorders that people walk around with and are totally normal. And it's only if, you know, I don't know, something flags up in your offspring that you might find out that you've got it. If it's only, a, you know, a tiny part of that chromosome that's been deleted. I follow a channel. I followed the channel for a long time called, what's it called? Oh, God. Um, our Landing Crew. So Our Landing Crew, they have six children in the family. Four of them are special needs. Four of them are diagnosed with autism. One of them, the eldest special needs child, has got um, intellectual disabilities. And then the three younger child children with autism, I think one of them's very, very bright, very intelligent, doesn't have an intellectual disability, was slow to talk. Um, and the other two, I think, had, one of them's a, just started school and I think he's still nonverbal or virtually nonverbal. Anyway, the whole family had genetic testing and they were, all of them, even the parents, were found to have um, three deletions. So varying, like I think one parent had one deletion, one parent had another deletion or something, I can't remember. It wasn't chromosome six, I think it was chromosome 16 and 17. I remember her doing a video on it all <laughs> when they all had the testing done. And even the two kids, the two eldest kids that have absolutely no signs of autism and no signs of intellectual disability have just gone through mainstream school with absolutely no problems have some signs of this chromosomal deletion disorder so <laughs> it's like they they would never have known if they hadn't been tested as part of this part of this family so they've all got these deletions but kind of slightly different variations of it. it's fascinating absolutely fascinating all right so yeah so some people with this particular disorder 6q27 um don't know they've got it don't know they've got it all right so some issues with feeding maybe um but probably nothing that would be massively unusual. Like a lot of babies have issues with feeding when they're, when they're first born, you know, like um, colic and reflux and stuff like that. Loads of them do. But, okay, children as they grow, uh, they can be tall, medium or short for their age. So there's no growth issue. Oh, there's one, one growth delay. Appearance, doctors may notice in a baby what are known as dimorphic features, dysmorphic features, which may or may not be obvious to the parent. Some of these facial features of little to no importance. Some have none. <laughs> so some might look slightly, um, let's say, characteristic to a to maybe to a professional not necessarily to a lay person but to a professional they might take a look and say mm, there's maybe some signs possibly here that we need to test this particular individual again we don't know whether that was any evident at all in sebastian's case so like sebastian doesn't it doesn't have an unusual appearance shall we say but in some of these kids, um, it is the, there's particular characteristics that could be signs of a disorder. Uh, okay. Could be minor abnormalities of the hands and feet relative to commonly in children with chromosome disorders. May just be cosmetic or may make it harder for the child to use their hands or to walk. So we don't know whether that's the case for Sebastian. We just know that he does walk. Uh, he goes to mainstream school. 
Okay. Other features. And again, none of these features that might be apparent are in any way catastrophic, mainly cosmetic. Um, there could be could be spinal issues, a sacral pit. So this is a little hole or dimple just above the crease between the buttocks. And again, that could be that can be a sign f f as a, for a professional that there's something that needs to be investigated. Like this sacral dimple is characteristic in a lot of disorders. Um, because that so they, they do look for that when babies are born. Wow, sacral pit may be deep and even connect to the spinal canal. Is there any concern about this? Baby's spine will be imaged usually with an MRI. And then um, there can be some abnormalities in the brain. Now we do know that. Sebastian does have an issue in his brain that he's got a, a, a pocket of fluid in his one side of his brain. And Seth has also said that he used to have seizures when he was young, not the full on grand mal seizures, the tonic clonic seizures, but absent seizures. So almost, so there's 49 children studied here and 21 of those 49 so that's nearly half had seizures but seizures again lots of kids have seizures when they're young and most grow out of them some will be diagnosed with epilepsy or some other similar disorder others won't you know there's no apparent reason why they're having them they just grow out of them um, so it does say something about the brain here. Um, a baby or child with 6U26 or 6U27 is likely to have imaging of the brain because in many cases, though not all, unusual structures have been found. There are two typical abnormalities associated with terminal 6U deletion. The first is colp... Col <laughs> Colpolcephony, Colpolcephony, where the rear portion of the fluid filled ventricles of the brain is larger than normal. So you've got these like spaces in your brain that contain cerebrospinal fluid, they're called the ventricles. So if if you've got fluid on your brain, it can it could be one of the um one of the fluid on the brain symptoms can be larger than average ventricles. Our fluid can be like building up surrounding the brain. The second is, is a disorder of the band of nerve fibers that connects the two hemispheres of the brain, the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum may be incomplete, abnormally formed, thin, or may be missing. And again, you, you can, you can, have absolutely no corpus callosum at all whatsoever and never know it. Absolutely never know it. I don't know if he has a shunt or has ever had a shunt. I don't know the answer to that. Um, why, what any unusual formations may apply for an individual child, it's not always clear. I mean, I've got a brain abnormality and I didn't know it until, which I was born with, and I didn't know it until 2012. There you go. Um, around one in four babies has a small head and this may persist into adulthood. So I don't know how they define small head. But anyway. So increased size of ventricles in some cases requiring drainage through a temporary or long-term shunt. So we don't know whether that's the case with Sebastian. So there's quite a lot about the brain in here. 
again i'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to read it all and then around half of people including adults and children are known to have had seizures at some point of various types starting between four months and four years all generally well controlled with conventional anti-epileptic medication but apparently according to seth uh, Sebastian has grown out of seizures um, and otherwise these kids are just perfectly normal physically uh, one of the kids in this study had a heart defect but that kid might have had a heart defect anywhere do you know what I mean so all right let's go on to Let's go on to the behavioural part. Okay, so, outlook for physical problems. No reports of hearing or eyesight may have some issues. We know Sebastian wears glasses. But then again, lots and lots of people have issues with their eyesight. All right, development might be slow, slower than average to walk and crawl and stuff, but probably not massively of a concern. Um, and underlying, if there are mobility issues or slow development mobility-wise, it may be mainly due to low muscle tone. So they might need some kind of special supports or to learn to walk. Well, the outlook for older children looks good with teenagers enjoying excellent mobility and walking, running, climbing, riding, playing ball games and swimming. But might not be possible for all. So we know that Sebastian is a good swimmer. We've heard from Seth that he's a good swimmer. And um, yeah, so no problems mobility wise. So if Sebastian did run away, he wouldn't have had any more problems walking and, you know, being out there than any other 15-year-old. His disorder wouldn't prevent him from running away, I think is what I'm saying here. All right. So let's move on. Speech and communication. Uh, while some delay in the emergence of speech and language is to be expected, the extent of the delay is variable and probably reflects the level of cognitive ability, appears in most children to be mild. The great majority of children do learn to speak, although this may not be possible for all. So it may be slower than average to speak. One of my sons didn't speak at all till he was three. Um... And uh, I was not concerned whatsoever. I knew that he understood everything. I knew that I knew that he didn't have a problem, like in cognitively. Uh, but reluctantly, I agreed to take him to speech therapy. We had one session of speech therapy, and the speech therapist said, like she was getting him to do like all these different sounds. And she was like, he can make all the sounds necessary for speech. I said, I know he can. <laughs> he doesn't want to speak. <laughs> and she went, oh, well, we could encourage him to speak. It's like, why? If he doesn't want to speak, he'll speak when he's ready. <laughs> he'll speak when he's ready. Anyhow, right? One day, he suddenly decided to speak. And within a week... He could speak as well as any other three-year-old. I swear to God, I swear down, I swear on my life that one day he just decided he was going to speak. And within a week, he just caught up. I can't, I can't deal with people who stress so badly about children's development. Um... Anyhow, learning. 
Children are likely to need some support with their education. So we know that Sebastian is in mainstream school, but is in the special needs program. Um, while predicting the level of support needed is not possible from the size of the chromosome deletion, it seems that most children will have moderate, mild or borderline learning difficulty, perhaps with some areas of superior ability. So we know that in some ways, Sebastian is really, really intelligent. Um, he, he can play chess, for example. And then we know in other ways, he's not. He's, he's socially awkward, which is probably the reason why he's been diagnosed with autism. But probably the issues that he's had that has resulted in him being diagnosed with autism are actually maybe due to his chromosomal deletion syndrome. Because autism itself has many causes. There isn't one cause of autism. Some people who are diagnosed with autism have chromosomal disorders like Sebastian or like the family in uh, our landing crew. Most don't. Most, there's no discernible reason. It's just a thing. Okay. Um, but some of them, some of these kids, have got really low IQs, like an IQ of 55, really low. Um, IQ is 78, it's lower than average. IQ is intelligence quotient, it's just an intelligence test. Not that useful, really, but the average IQ is 100. So if you've got an IQ of 78, yeah, you're going you're gonna to have significant learning difficulties, but you, you, you'll be able to get a job um, and deal with life and stuff. IQ of 55, not so much. You're probably going to need a lot more help. Um, but some of these kids do have severe learning difficulties. We know that's not Sebastian. We know he doesn't have severe learning difficulties. We know he's in mainstream school. We know he does mainstream work. He gets extra time on tests and things, but he, he can do everything that a mainstream kid can do. You got an IQ of 148. Ooh. Uh, ooh, 143. Well, aren't you the brain boxes in the in the class here? Not near the brain boxes. Um, I know I did an IQ test once. I remember we did one at college, like to because we were doing psychology to show what these IQ tests were. We were given a test to do, and uh, I got really bored by the end, and I didn't finish it right. Um, but it kept, I think my score came out at like one thirty, but I just got bored and ended up doodling on the page. So. Oh, <laughs> maybe I would have scored higher if I hadn't have been so distractible <laughs> and bored. <laughs> 90 to 110 is average. Yes, it is. All right. So uh, families comment that their children learn best when following a routine. In general, they have a good, if uneven, memory. We also know that Sebastian's been diagnosed with ADHD. So, they succeeded by learning by repetition, competing with their peers, being interested in the subject, and by sheer determination. Children often start their education in a mainstream school, usually with learning support, and transfer to a special school, usually for secondary education, where their specific needs can be more, more appropriate. That's not the case for Sebastian. He's in a mainstream high school. So learning-wise, he is not severely affected. Behaviour. Now, this, this is the interesting bit. This is a bit I, I wanted to get to. There's no evidence yet of a particular behavioural pattern associated with 6Q deletions, although there is some slight evidence that some children may develop autistic features. So we know that Sebastian last year was diagnosed with autism. Again, if he'd never got an autism diagnosis, I don't think it would have mattered 
to Sebastian because he was already in a special needs program because of his, they knew he had learning difficulties. They knew he needed extra support and they've known since he was a baby that he had this chromosomal deletion syndrome and there there are particular features to it that I think Sebastian had been dealing with for his entire life and the main one seems to be to do with his behavior that's the thing that we've heard about the most thank you Aussie TV for the 199 that's very kind thank you thank you you wonder where he took lunch I don't know Presumably with everyone else, wherever they had lunch at that school. I don't know. Some was in mainstream school and college when he went on a special course he's called Pathways. I can't remember what Seth said the programme was called that Sebastian's on. Why We Try? I think something something along those lines. Okay. Uh, one boy of 12 had been described as anxious with a conduct disorder. So conduct disorder is um, well, basically where you're badly behaved, <laughs> your problems with your conduct. Some kids who are diagnosed with conduct disorder do go on to get a personality disorder diagnosis as an adult, usually antisocial personality disorder and a tendency to self-mutilating behaviour. Now, that stood out to me because do you remember in the divorce papers and Seth claimed that Sebastian was harming himself? Well, could be as a result of this disorder. I, I assume that underlying self-mutilating behavior in a young child is going to be things like frustration and anger and not understanding how to deal with their emotions so they need a lot of extra extra support and um and guidance not being hit with a belt that will not help kids like this will not help kids like this learn Chris, are you listening? <laughs> they're not doing it because they're naughty. They're doing it because they're frustrated and they, they, they don't understand why they're frustrated. Uh, twin boys were both described as hyperactive. Children's behaviour is modulated by their experience as well as their perceptions, successes and frustrations. The snapshots that follow illustrate families experiencing at a variety of ages. So these are young children. Oh, no, I've got an age 15 here. So behavioural problems are not the, are, are not the, in this disorder, behavioural problems are not a given right it's just a possibility like there's possibilities with them having a brain an issue in their brain or an issue with their spine or certain characteristics in their face it doesn't mean that all kids with this disorder are going to have those it's a very varied disorder by the sounds of things um all right, so these are just what some parents have said in this particular study. Thank you, The Big Island, for the $4. That's very kind of you. Thank you, thank you. So this is a parent from an age four-year-old. She enjoys going for a walk in her stroller, swinging, looking for animals, swimming, listening to music and watching DVDs. Overall, she's generally happy. But she can't express what she wants or isn't happy. If, sorry, if she can't express what she wants or isn't happy, she bangs her head. So that's self-mutilating behaviour, potentially. 
could develop into something more serious if that kid carries on. Recently shown some challenging behaviour, restlessness and inappropriate friendliness, age six. Now, haven't we heard that Sebastian has a problem with personal space? Haven't we heard that Sebastian like makes other children feel uncomfortable because he stands too close to them? So maybe unusually friendly. And then at other times he doesn't want anything to do with them. So for me, this, this a lot of this is ringing true um, about what we've heard, particularly from Seth, about Sebastian's behaviour. So his behaviour, in my opinion, isn't a result of autism. The autism is a result of this 6Q27 disorder. Or rather, the autism diagnosis is a result of the disorder. So the behaviour is this disorder, not autism. Although it fulfills the criteria to be diagnosed with autism. Now, in this country, if you've got an autism diagnosis, you fare better. There might be a, a, a specific reason why the diagnosis is beneficial to Sebastian. More people understand what autism is these days rather than a rare genetic condition that you have to explain because nobody's ever heard of it. So there might be some benefits of having an autism diagnosis above and beyond understanding Sebastian's behaviour. It might be an easier way to explain how Sebastian is as a person to have an autism diagnosis. So I don't think it's wrong for him to have been given an autism diagnosis. It will probably help him to have that diagnosis because autism is a disorder that is... Um, people have heard of it, let's just say. Uh, thank you, Woodchipper, for the $2. That's very kind of you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so this is a 10 year old, enjoys playing with other people, animals, to colour and draw, music, singing and dancing, sociable and affectionate, can get frustrated and has an input from a behavioural therapist, takes respiridone as a tranquilizer, and is learning to stop and take deep breaths. So again, issues with controlling maybe their temper, controlling their frustration. Used to take imipramine, an antidepressant, and clonidine, a drug with sedative effects, to sleep, but now sleeps easily and deeply without it. Age 10. Okay, age 14. Makes an effort to fit in socially and has play dates and sleepovers with typically developing and learning disabled friends. Somewhat inflexible. We have learned to back off and keep stress low. Loves nature and animals. Can be moody. Can't all 14-year-olds. <laughs> Likes to be left alone and can get overwhelmed when amongst more than a few peers. Now, that again, that sounds like what we've heard about Sebastian. Response to stress by getting upset. Again, seems to be what, what happens with Sebastian. Needs direction. Not being hit with a belt. Chris, are you listening? We also use sensory integration techniques to help sleep and reduce anxiety. Takes low dose imipramine at night, age 14. And then age 15, this parent says of their child, a very polite, well mannered boy, very little problems at all. So behavioral problems are not a given with this disorder. Um, it's just one of the things that can be characteristic of this disorder, but it's not a given. So it's a, a wide spectrum of potential issues. And the main issues with Sebastian seem to be his behaviour rather than his physical, um, you know, physical things that sometimes people are with this condition 
have. Growing up, there is limited information on youngsters growing up because it's a rare disorder, right? And there's probably way more people that have this disorder and many other chromosomal disorders who have never been tested because they've never needed to be tested. They've never needed it, that they've had no issues at all. <laughs> so just don't know they've got it. Or maybe I've just had some mild issues like developmental delay or maybe slow to walk or maybe were very moody as a teenager <laughs> like me. And, and it's just never picked up because it's not unusual behaviour. It's not unusual to be moody as a teenager. It's not unusual to be a little slower than average learning to walk. Um, no, I didn't mention the prevalence of in incidents because it's very rare. This document, I can I can look up the incidents, but it's very rare. Um, it's um, like I said, though, it's it's probably because this is not testing that is done routinely. You know, if if every every single person that was born was given genetic testing, there'd be way more genetic problems, quote unquote problems, that get picked up simply because everybody's now tested. Does it mean it's going to have an effect on your behaviour or your life? No, <laughs> probably not. So these things are not routine tests. We are all on a spectrum. We're all on some kind of spectrum. We are, all of us. What that spectrum is, though, varies. Some of, some of us are on more than one spectrum. Okay, so there's limited information on youngsters growing up. But a youngster of 15 is being taught to drive and run a canteen at school. Puberty in two youths proceeded normally with mood swings, the most obvious manifestation. But mood swings are just what teenagers do. <laughs> At least four adults with Q 6Q27 deletion have children with the same deletion. And I bet you any money those adults were only tested when there was an issue with their child. Because these days... There's way more opportunities to get a young child tested than to get a, than than to have been tested yourself when you were a child, simply because of medical knowledge and testing being more readily available than it was. Excuse me. Like, um, I mean, I'm pretty glad that I grew up in a time when. Not everything got labelled as a disorder because <laughs> given the issues I had, <laughs> I'd probably have a laundry list of diagnoses. You know, if I was a child now, if I was going through my um, teenage years now, I'd have been diagnosed with virtually every disorder <laughs> going. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Why did this deletion occur? This is the last section. I'm going to read this one. Most 6Q deletions occur out of the blue, and on examination, the parents have normal chromosomes. The genetic term for this is de novo. Um, or oh, DN. DN 6Q26, Q27 deletions are caused by a mistake that occurs when the parent sperm or egg cells are formed or else very shortly after conception, when a baby is made. Occasionally, one parent is found to have a change in their own chromosomes at 6Q26 or 27 that makes them much more likely to have a child with this type of deletion. Isn't that interesting? So they don't have it, the, the entire deletion, but they might have some like little blip. You might have some little blip that can be, that maybe becomes a deletion in the child. How interesting is that? 
I love this kind of stuff. It's really interesting. A blood test to check the parents' chromosomes will show what the situation is. In four families in this study, a 6Q27 deletion has been passed down directly from either the mother or the father to one or more children. And I bet you any money those parents didn't know till they had a kid. So somebody with 6Q27 like Sebastian can go on to have a completely normal life, can go on to have children, can go on to have a family. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. Yes, that child might inherit the same disorder. or They might not. I guess they might not. Right. Because if it's a deletion of just one chromosome, then their child might get the other chromosome just by chance. So don't have the disorder. All right. Because it's remember it's only a it's only a deletion of one chromosome. Um now if two two parents with 6Q27 had a child. So it'll be a 50-50 chance. Of their child having it. No, it wouldn't. No, it would be one in. Hold on. No, it would be. It would be a twenty-five percent chance that they didn't have it. So there'd be a seventy-five percent chance that they did. That's if two parents bred a child, bred together, and bred a child with it. But it's a very rare disorder, so the chances of that happening are rare. Whether the deletion is inherited or de novo, so it just happens, just out of the blue, by accident. What is certain is that a parent, there is nothing you did to cause it, nothing you could have done that would have prevented it from occurring in your child. No environmental, dietary or lifestyle factors are known to cause these chromosomal changes. No one is to blame when this occurs and no one is at fault. Can it happen again? The possibility of having another pregnancy with a 6Q deletion depends on the parent's chromosomes. If both parents have normal chromosomes, the 6Q deletion is very unlikely to happen again because it's rare to begin with. If a blood test shows that either parent has a chromosomal change involving 6Q, the possibility is increased of having another pregnancy with chromosomal changes. Once a family chromosome change is known, a test of any future pregnancy can find out whether the baby's chromosomes are affected. A genetic specialist can then give you more guidance. When one parent has the same 6Q27 deletion as the child, a likelihood of having another child with 6Q27 is likely to be as high as 50%. Although the only cases we know about so far involving 6Q27 it's also theoretically possible for a small 6Q26 micro deletion to be passed down from parent to child. Will they have similarly defected children, affected children? Adults with 6Q deletions may form close relationships and want to have children. It's not yet known for certain whether the deletion affects fertility, but in some cases it's possible that fertility will be normal. Well, of course it's going to be, because if parents are passing this down to their kids, of course they're fertile. There are families with 6Q27 deletions passed down through the generations. In each pregnancy, someone with the deletion is likely to have the possibility of passing it on, and it could be as high as 50%, and a 50% possibility of having a child without the deletion. So if one parent has the deletion, then it's 50-50. If both parents have the deletion, my math tells me it's going to be 25% chance not, 75% chance yes. It is heritable. However, it's also a, um, in, in probably most cases, it happens just by chance. So now it's Klippel, I can't even say that, tenunary syndrome. I've never heard of that. 
Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, I've heard of that. Parts, I've heard of that because I've got that. Also on the autism spectrum. Wow. Cool. Or not. What's Clippel ten tenuraria syndrome? I've never heard of it. Clippel ten ten nine. <laughs> These things are just impossible to say. Why why are like medical terms so difficult to say? Oh, there you go. I'd like to have a redo. Knowing an autistic ADHD instead of being given labels like defiant, disobedient, distracted, oversensitive, over-emotional. For other labels you've got now. Well, I was definitely defiant, disobedient, distracted. Um, I was under-emotional. <laughs> I was... I was a hard, hard case, a hard nut to crack. Did I see Trev time with the pre-recorded interview of Chris's ex-wife? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Oh my word. Ten, tenone, tenone, tenone. That's still difficult to say. No, I am going to have to go and listen to that though. Had a doctor tell you you were hypersensitive? Uh, I'm I'm undersensitive, I think. All right, yeah. So that's so I thought that was interesting. So this is this is a UK thing. Rare chromosome disorder support group. You can if you're in the UK, you get support from here. It's Facebook page for chromosome six disorders. So yeah, and that was uh, published in 2018. So take a look, it's interesting. Um, I am curious as to how common it is. How common is 6Q27 You're going to give me a figure. I bet it doesn't even give me a figure because it's really rare. What are they going to say? Oh, that's a case study. Usually, when the um, these guys get involved, it's something seriously affecting you. That's what we've just read. Extremely rare. Oh, that's partial trisomy. Oh, that's not it. I don't think there's a figure. I don't think it's going to say like one in 2,000 or one in 20,000. I think it's that rare that there isn't a figure. Correct me if I'm wrong. There might there might be a figure somewhere or another. Terminal six Q deletions cause brain malformation. Right, so this is this is all different. This is in fetuses. That's not going to tell me. I want to know about live births. I don't think it's going to tell me. So this is about all six, all terminal six Q deletions are rare. Number of well-defined published cases is limited since parents of children with these 
Aberration. You can't put in a published paper aberration. It's a loaded term. It's a disorder. I often search the internet and unite via it. Oh, okay. So this is a collaboration between researchers and clinicians. The aim is to improve the surveillance of patients with chromosome 6 aberrations. Here we report our findings in 93 individuals. I don't think there's a figure. I don't think it's going to tell me. I think it's going to tell me. It's that rare. So there you go. I thought that was something a little bit different to talk about in relation to the case. It doesn't help us find Sebastian. It doesn't help us work out what went wrong and, and why he's missing. But it tells us a little bit about him as a person. Just a little bit about him as a person and the challenges that he's dealt with throughout his life. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, indeed. I didn't hear it from JLR. I heard it from um, them themselves. <laughs> but for those who haven't heard, if you saw my live stream the other day about the United Cajun Navy being, I think, I think that's, I think what I said was, in a week's time, how many people are still going to be searching? for Sebastian. I think that was what I said. Well, the United Cajun Navy have packed up and gone home. All right. They say that they're regrouping, never retreating. All right. Okay. All right. How is it then that three days this week you've regrouped so on sunday they said give us 24 hours and we'll we'll be we'll be back with a plan right all right so monday came and went no plan no searches tuesday came and went they um they they agreed to search on tuesday however what did they do well it spit it spitted a little bit of rain and these guys are made of, I don't know, sugar paper or something. They can't go out in the rain. They're going to melt. So they couldn't, they couldn't work because it was drizzling a little bit. So there was no search on Tuesday. Wednesday, they did a little bit in the afternoon. So they posted midway through Wednesday saying, oh, we'll be here till about four. So if anybody wants to come along, we'll do some targeted searches. All right. Thursday yesterday i do believe they actually did a search i believe there was a search yesterday today today they planned a search but then um due to security issues they had to pack up and go home aren't they being threatened who are they being threatened by who are who are the who are these guys being threatened by? I mean, come on! If they're scared of a bit of rain, then I don't know. Maybe a, a small child came along, and I don't know, threw a piece of bubble gum at them or something, and they they ran off scared. I I don't know. I wasn't there. There's there's no secure. What security issues are there? All these YouTubers that they were, you know, they've driven away. Like JLR's gone home. He's now reporting from his um his house dolly vision's gone home he's also reporting from his house so the guys that they didn't want to live stream and they were threatening to call the cops on or in, in jail last case they actually did call the cops on him they've gone home so who's threatening them but apparently they're, they're more than just search and rescue they work in communities all right cool cool all right they stand about chatting. All right. So this is what came out nine hours ago. For immediate release, spelt wrong. Attention, all UCN search volunteers. Today's search for Sebastian Rogers has been called off due to increasing security concerns with the upcoming Easter holiday. The decision has been made as of this morning to pull back and regroup. 
how many times does a search organization need to regroup? This decision was not taken lightly, but they wanted to go on for Easter. They just wanted to go on, weren't getting enough donations and stuff. All right. Okay. Uh, made with the safety of all volunteers in mind, because I don't know, they're scared of the Easter bunny. The Easter bunny is going to jump out of the bushes and uh, accost them. I, I don't know. We want to thank our volunteers that plan to be out searching today and presumably turned up, I would imagine. We will continue to evaluate the situation, which means that they're going to do this again. They're going to do this more and more. They're going to evaluate on it. You know, they're not just going to have a plan. They're going to evaluate on a day by day basis. How many searchers are going to be bothered to keep turning up? on the off chance that, oh, these guys might actually do a search today. Come on. Come on. This does not mean the search is over. No, it doesn't mean the search is over. All right. A shame this child is not a priority for anyone. It's a shady situation from the start. All right. <sighs> Pray for everyone's safety. Save your prayers. They're not in any danger. Pretty sure Biodad got good info yesterday that's passed on to UCN. So you all just be patient and trust the process. All right. We'll trust the process. Thank you, Lindsay, for the three pounds. That's very kind of you. Honestly, leaving these groups due to these people believing their opinions are facts. Right. Absolutely disgusting on such a beautiful day. And people don't want to search for that precious baby. Remember what's done in the dark will come to light. God knows. And the worst punishment. You can... Ooh. All right. Well, we just have to hope for an Easter miracle, don't we? An Easter miracle for Sebastian. <laughs> Listen, if you lived in uh, if you lived in the UK, you'd not be scared of a bit of drizzle. <laughs> These guys need to come over. Listen, today was was a beautiful morning. Absolutely gorgeous. Really nice spring morning, right? I went out twice this morning. Then I decided to cut down my bamboo tree because it's I did not cut it down completely. I've just like gave it a gave it a, basically gave it a, a a very a very severe trim. And I've got all my arms cut up. So it, it does actually look like I've murdered somebody because I've got all my arms cut up. Um, but during that process, it started to rain and it absolutely poured down. So it went from a beautiful spring morning to an afternoon where my front lawn is now a marsh again. I mean, it's just the water is going nowhere. It's just so sodden. So it's soaking. You can't go one day. One day in the last, I don't know, God knows how many months, that it hasn't rained at least for part of the day. It's uh, unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. It's crazy. Thank you, Vegan Firefly, for the one ninety nine. It's very kind of you. All four seasons in one day. You do. You do. Oh, yeah, it, the rain didn't stop me. I'd nearly finished anyway by the time it started raining, but I had hailstones yesterday. Blimey. No horse pipe. <laughs> That's true. Mind you, though, like we'll get like, I don't know, a week where it doesn't rain and then there'll be a water shortage. You can just guarantee it. <laughs> Makes me laugh. It, it, I, right, listen, if the UK, they do it, they didn't do it last year, did they? Because it was really raining, really raining all of last year. The year before, though, we had a water shortage. 
<laughs> in the country where it rains all the time, we had a water shortage. <laughs> and they do a hose pipe ban. Oh, don't use a hose pipe. Oh, can't use a hose pipe. Because we, we're going to have no water. <laughs> it's nuts. You've not had a horse pipe ban since the summer of 76. Oh, that was a hot summer, though. I remember that. That was a hot summer. Oh, yeah. Two years ago, we had a horse pipe ban here. Yeah? <laughs> I don't have a horse pipe, but if I had a horse pipe, I've just... I'm defiant and disobedient. Let's put it that way. When I'm told to uh, to do something or not to do something, find a way around it. You know, like when they say all dogs must be kept on leads. Well, you've not told me the size of the lead. I've got a 30 foot line. So, yeah, I'm going to keep my dog on a lead. But she's 30 foot down, <laughs> down the road. All right, I'm getting silly now. So I am going to go. But yeah, these guys aren't searching. Yeah, so I'll just refer you to what I said a few days ago about the United Cajun Navy. And I'm going to go and listen to, who, who was it you said? Trev Time. Interviewing Chris's ex-wife. Oh, no. Oh, no, I did to think. 14C right now. I don't know what it is here, actually. It's colder than that, but not that much colder. You like me being silly? Oh, that's good. Four degrees in Gateshead. That's a bit chilly. It feels quite warm here. It's been warm all day. All right, let's go over and listen to Trev time. Five degrees here. Five degrees in Ayrshire. Huh. Well, feels warm here. Don't know. Am I heating on? No. Not had any heating on all day. Anyway, all right, I'll be back tomorrow. So I shall see you then. Thank you all. Thank you for the donations, you guys. Thank you to the mods, as always. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye, folks. <laughs>